Welcome back to How to Be a Successful Business Coach Part 3. We're gonna talk this time about how to run and scale your operation. Let's go. So once you've gotten off the ground, you have a clear value proposition, a target audience, you are humming with the sales and the marketing, you'll probably want to know, well, how do I grow this thing? How do I scale it? How do I get bigger? Well, there are a lot of different ways to do that and it kind of depends on your personality. So in this video, I'm going to touch on how to run your coaching business how to grow and how to scale your coaching business. So now that you've done all those things, it's stabilization time. This is where you put in the infrastructure, the operations and the processes for other people to do the work for you or with you, or even for you to get hire a whole staff or even license out your processes and your systems to other coaches who might wanna pay you for what you've developed. So the first step is make sure that you have your systems and processes in place so that you can start to replicate results with less effort. So what that looks like is creating checklists and templates and basically systematizing what you know how to do, keeping track of what works and getting rid of what doesn't work. I've been in business 14 years and it took me until about two years ago to really take this on seriously. Now, by the way, I wanna be clear, I do not think you should take 12 years to get to this point like I did. And in fact, if you watch my videos and you check out my coaching business playlist, how to build and grow a successful coaching business, you should be able to shave years, if not even a decade off of your learning curve based on all the mistakes that I made. So anyways, took me until a couple years ago, which is when I hired my superstar assistant, who I adore, who has been helping us create systems and processes for everything we do. We have a system and process for how to run a Zoom call, how to create, how to upload the recordings into our learning platform, how to market, how to put together a blog post and post it to LinkedIn. Everything we do in the business is now documented and systematized so that if one day she's not around, we could just hand over the system to somebody new and they could pretty quickly get up to speed. Oh, by the way, here's a little secret. One of the things that we do to capture these systems is we take screen videos, screen grabs, we use Loom, and we upload them into a learning database so that every single process in the business is documented with a little video of how to do it. So that's a really cool way to get somebody trained up quick. But that's the key. Step one, to run your operation smoothly and be ready for scale is to organize the operational components that keep things moving. Make sense? As you're doing this systemization of everything, one thing I want to make clear that I probably should have mentioned at the beginning is that all the while your goal is to get to monthly recurring revenues. Now this is all the way from the very beginning, right? What I like to say is that all roads lead to the big back end. The big back end of your consulting or coaching business is where you're collecting retainer revenue from your clients monthly for at least a year. That's the ideal situation. Once you have monthly recurring revenues, then what happens is you can much more easily hire staff. You can much more easily hire a project manager to make sure things get done. You can much more easily hire somebody to help you document all these standard operating procedures. So that's something that really early on you want to be working towards, but especially if you're at this place and you're ready to scale, if you don't have monthly recurring revenues, then that's really what you want to put into place first, because that'll give you the ability to hire and invest and not have to worry about, oh, am I going to be able to pay my bills next month? Another thing you'll want to look at is have you stabilized your lead flow and your sales process? Now you can stabilize all the operational stuff you want, but if you aren't getting consistent lead flow and sales, then your business is going to look like this. So we want to make sure that we've figured out what are the real marketing strategies that really drive the needle, like that really drive your revenues, what really works. So I mentioned in the last video that I have a few marketing strategies, I do many marketing strategies, but there are three in particular that work really well. So you need to identify what your three, at least core marketing strategies are that you know will consistently deliver leads over time. And then don't ever get complacent, all right? Because just to give you an example, when COVID happened, one of my primary lead gen strategies was 
in-person events and that went away almost overnight and we had to quickly scramble and put something else into place so you want to be having your three or so core strategies and also always be exploring some new ways you know not investing a ton and losing your focus all over the place or diffusing your focus but rather you know just looking at okay what's a new strategy like right now clubhouse is getting really hot and i'm like hmm I'm going to check out Clubhouse. I'm not going to put all my eggs in the Clubhouse basket. I'm not going to spend all my time on Clubhouse, but I am going to set aside a few hours a week to check it out and study it and get on there and play. So really nailing down those marketing strategies to fill your pipeline and making sure that you're tracking your conversion rates. So you understand, are these leads qualified? Are they converting into sales? How many conversations do I have in order to get to one sale? You know, if you're looking at a conversion rate of like one in every 10 or 20 calls, I would say focus some of your attention on optimizing that by getting better client conversations or, you know, having better, more qualified prospects to get on the phone with or really up leveling your own mastery of sales. That's usually where the real juice is. Before I go on to the final point of this part three of my series on how to grow a successful coaching business, please subscribe to my channel so that you get notified every time I launch a new video. So now let's get into the actual scaling part of the coaching business. So once you've got like your marketing dialed in, your branding and all these things are flowing, you've got systems and processes, then you're really set up to scale in a lot of different ways. So here are a few you might think about. Number one, you might introduce some new products, some new services. For example, if you've got all this figured out and you've got a very boutique coaching model where you're working with clients one-on-one, -on -one, you might want to consider creating a group model that'll leverage your time more effectively. Like I did, that's actually how I grew. I created some retreats and a mastermind program, a group coaching mastermind program. Another way that you can scale is by hiring a lot of staff. You can hire in people and train them and then put them to work with your clients. And that's not my favorite model, and I'll tell you why. Because when you do that, then you're taking on a lot more responsibility. Now that works for some people, but not so much for me. My personality is I'd rather do this third option where I teach people how to do what I've done, but I license it to them and let them go out in the world and do it with my license. So they can use my branding, they can use my materials, those systems and processes, but I don't actually have to worry about feeding them business or keeping them afloat, right? They're on their own, they have their own business, and I can even support them. So that's another kind of iteration of that model. You could have consultants out there doing your work and then they become your client. So for example, instead of you working with the end client yourself, or even having your staff work with the end client, you can go out into the world and be the thought leader. You can write the book, you can do the YouTube videos, and then you can attract other people who wanna do what you do, teach them how you do it, and then support them as they go out in the world and build out that business. So that's a beautiful model. And in fact, I have a friend who does this model really, really well. He's not a coach so much anymore. He's more of a consultant now, or he was more of a consultant. His name is Mike Michalowicz, and I actually interviewed him for my podcast. You can check that out at the link below. He was my very first podcast interview because I admire him so much. So Mike Michalowicz, he grew and scaled his consulting business in much the way I recommend you considering scaling your coaching business, which is where he developed his methodology. It's called Profit First, and it's a way of building growth and profit for a business. He basically developed the methodology, and then he started to train other consultants and coaches and accountants in the methodology, and then he licensed the materials to them. So those people ended up becoming his clients. Instead of the end user becoming his clients, the middleman, right, the, the professional consultant and service provider became his client. They pay him a yearly fee in order to stay certified and in order to be able to use his systems and methods, you know, use his name. So that's another way to think about growing and scaling your coaching business is by creating your methodology and then training other people to use it and then supporting them as they go out in the world and execute. If you're at the point where you're really looking to grow and scale your coaching business, maybe you've reached that max capacity one-on-one -on -one and you want to try a group model or a mastermind model, let's talk. This is what I do and I do it really well. Go to superstaractivator.com 
slash go and set up a time for us to chat. And I'll look at your business and I'll help you decide what's the best way to move forward in order to grow and scale. Enjoy. I'll see you there.